this is an amazing bag hi i'm emma from studio 727 and on this bag making tutorial i'm going to show you how to make the compass bag from kmg handmade it's a really beautiful bag it's packed with features and on this bag making tutorial sewing isn't going to be too hard because i'm going to take you through it step by step so let's take a look at the bag. There's so many great features on this bag. As you can see, it's got feature panels on both the back and the front. There's an option for a small pocket or you can do the large pocket as well on the exterior. So there's lots of options here. Inside, it's got a magnetic clasp at the top. It's got a small zipper pocket and then it's also got a large slip pocket. Now, this is compartmentalized up, so you've got three actual pockets inside. And the genius thing is that you've actually got a pocket for your water bottles. So no more water bottles falling over. I just love that. If at any point you're finding value from this video, please do hit that thumbs up as it lets me know that you're enjoying my tutorial. And if you check out the description below, I have all the timestamps and I also have a great money off coupon to get this pattern today. So let's go. So first of all, you want to gather all your hardware and all your different pattern pieces. Now, you just want to make sure if you're using quilting cotton that you're going to use a fusible fleece on the back or something just to make it give it a bit more sturdiness for the exterior pieces and you want to cut out your C and your A so that they're matching or you can do them in a contrasting fabric or a contrasting vinyl. For mine I'm doing the cotton cotton for the middle pieces and then I'm doing vinyl for everything else and then I've got a contrasting lining. You also want to cut out, there's some extra pieces as well. The recommended in the pattern is to cut out Decoville Heavy, but I haven't got any of that. So I'm just going to cut out, or I have cut out two pieces of Decoville Light and I'm going to fuse it all together just to make it a bit sturdier. So you've cut out all your pieces. You then want to make sure you're going to interface some of the pieces. So if you're going to be using vinyl or quilting cotton, obviously, you're going to definitely need to interface with the fusible fleece, like I've just mentioned. But with vinyl as well, you're going to want to use Decoville Light. I should say as well that I am going to be doing the smaller pocket option on the back of the bag and the larger pocket option on the front. Obviously, you can mix and match it. You can do big on both sides or small on both sides, um, however you want to choose it, choose to do it. So. When you're cutting out the front panels, I just wanted to mention that obviously you're going to cut out two of each side. Again, you could do the back as plain and then you would copy once you've pieced all these pieces together, you would copy them to make one big piece for your back. But we are going to do the design on both the front and the back. So. When you're cutting out your pieces, you want to cut out, as I say, your front pieces, your A's and your C's, two of each because I'm doing the design on the front and the back. You also need to cut out for your large pocket, you need to cut out two of the lining pieces. Now, these are also going to be fused with woven. So all the lining pieces, apart from the inside of the pocket, are all fused with woven interfacing. So for your large one, you want to cut out two of those. They're symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter which way around you cut it, but obviously in the pocket, it's going to be like that. Then if you're doing the small pocket option, which like I say, we're going to do on the back, we then need to cut out two of the left and you're going to cut them out so that they're kind of mirrored. So that obviously that's then your inside of your bag. You don't want to cut out two left facing up because obviously then it's not going to work because you want them facing right sides together. You also, when you're cutting out as well, as you'll see on the pattern piece, it says that you need to fold when you're cutting out the pocket piece because those are going to be slightly smaller when you're cutting them. So let's start sewing. So we're going to start off with our exterior strap connectors. And these are the connectors that go on the outside of the bags with the D-ring. And the, if you're using quilting cotton, you're going to want to, first of all, fold in the edges by a quarter of an inch. And then you're going to want to fold in each long edge to the middle. And then we're going to top stitch quarter of an inch from each edge. 
Now I'm of course using vinyl, so I'm going to skip that first step because we don't have the raw edges are not going to be a problem. So I'm going to fold in the outside long edges into the middle and then I'm going to top stitch each edge an eighth of an inch from the edge. So then we want to thread through our D-ring and we're just going to fold in those two bits into the middle and uh, we're going to clip in place. Then we need to take a zipper foot and we're going to sew as close as we can to that D-ring just to really secure it nicely in place. So now we've done that stitch close to the D-ring, we're just going to put them to one side and we'll come back to those later on. Next we're going to move on to the crossbody strap. Now I am making mine completely out of vinyl just because I didn't have enough of the quilting cotton to even do it a single side of quilting cotton and the other side of vinyl or to do it double in the quilting cotton so I'm going for vinyl. Now I've cut mine at four inches wide and then I'm going to place double sided, I've drawn a line down the middle, I'm going to place double sided over that line and then fold each side in to meet the drawn line and then fold again so that you have a one inch strap. Then stitch one eighth of an inch from each edge to secure. I stitch the open side first and always start at the same end each time to stop the curling that can happen. I'm going to borrow the instructions from another tutorial of mine for the rest of the strap as it's the same technique. I will pop a link to the Kismet bag in the description if you'd like to see the tutorial for that one too as it's also by KMG Handmade. So to complete the strap we need to feed one end through the middle of the slider and we're going to stitch a rectangle to secure that in place but I'm also going to pin the other one so it's ready so we want to make sure that you're keeping the same side up so that I know that I've got my raw edge up on this one and I've made sure that that's the same going along thread through my other clip And then we're going to go back through the swivel clip, through the other side. Give myself a little bit of space. And then I'm going to go through the other clip and back round. And we're going to do another rectangle to secure that in place. So to start the main part of the bag, we're going to take our A section and our two C sections and we're going to sew the C sections to the A and we're going to use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now, don't worry when you're lining it up, there is going to be a little bit of extra over the edge. That's fine. It's so that when you place it back down and it's all stitched, it's going to line up a bit nicer. Okay, so I've stitched that together and I've trimmed off all the threads. I've pressed open those seams. I'm just going to clip back any excess from the seam allowance so that it looks a bit nicer and it's all neater. Also on this corner, I'm just gonna make sure that that's gonna lie nice and flat. And I'm gonna snip off these little bits just to help that do that. Next, we need to stitch one eighth of an inch on each side just to hold that seam allowance really nice and flat and even it out. And if you're using vinyl, you might not have the fleece interfacing on the back, but if you are using quilting cotton, just be careful when you're pressing. I always recommend a Teflon sheet to go over that to protect your fleece and your iron. Then we're going to attach our exterior zipper to the left panel. So you want to take your zipper tape and place on your two zipper pulls if you haven't already. And I like to just snip off a little bit of the end. You can get like zipper jigs, things like that, but this is useful if you don't have one of those. And then I've also burnt the edge with a lighter and then you can kind of feed it through. So once you've got your zipper on, we're then going to cut it to like it says in the pattern. I'm also just gonna prepare my lining zipper as well, the interior zipper just in the same way. So I'm just going to pop the zipper pull on. So we're going to measure one inch from the end. And we're just going to fold that edge under. I quite like to fold my edge away from the top of the zip because then it's encased in the lining. You're going to see it less. 
so I also like to just get rid of those teeth. Now the best way to do that is to use some really tough scissors. These don't look tough but they're bonsai uh, plant scissors. They're fantastic for this job. Obviously if you're using a metal teeth zip then you cannot do this. You can get special tools to take out the teeth but if you're using a nylon or plastic zip this is what you do. So you chop very carefully. You do not want to cut through these top threads that are holding the teeth to the zipper tape. So you're going to chop off. They do kind of go a bit everywhere, so be careful. And you're just going to gently cut. You're trying not to cut that underneath tape as well. And I'm going to get rid of all of those. This is going to help your zip lay a lot flatter as well. And you want to go just almost up to that mark. Then you're going to want to take a larger pin. So a glass head pin is perfect for this. And you want to fold the zipper tape so that those little lumps which are the other edge of the teeth are showing and then you can stick your pin in and making sure you're not you haven't got any of the fibers of the zip tape you can pull the ends of the little teeth out so that means that you can get your zip laying really nice and flat because it hasn't got those teeth in the way and so we're going to fold that to the back and i'm just going to pop a little pin in there so that it stays in place and do the same on the other side. So you'll see on this pattern piece that it's got these notches here so I'm just going to lay that on and I'm going to make a little mark where that is so that I know where my zip needs to be lined up to and then I'm going to place that on and just double check that that meets and that is fine. Then I'm going to take my zipper tab and we want to place it on the end of the raw edge of the zipper and we're going to stitch three eighths of an inch from that end then we're going to fold it back and we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch and I'm going to do that for both zippers clip it in place along that edge and then we're going to sew it with three eighths of an inch seam allowance and a zipper foot because we're going to do the back of the bag at the same time, we're also going to go ahead and start on the back panel as well in exactly the same way. If you have any comments at all, please do pop them in the comments box below because I love to hear what you think. When it comes to stitching the end of the zip, you want to keep the needle down, pivot the work and go back along the end of the zip to hold it down. So next we're going to move on to the exterior pocket and side panel assembly. Now you have two options, you have a larger pocket or a smaller pocket. I am going to do the larger pocket on the front and the smaller pocket on the back so that you can see both options. If you want to jump ahead then check out the timestamps below and then you can skip to whichever you prefer. So for the large pocket we're going to take our H pieces, I'm just going to flip this side panel around, the L side that we sewed earlier, and we're going to have right side up of L, right side down of H, and we're going to baste along that edge to the zipper. One sixteenth of an inch along that edge. Then once that line is stitched, we want to open it up and then we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch from that edge. So we want to make sure that the lining is facing to the right and then we've got our exterior panel on the left. So now that's top stitched in place, we're then going to attach our main front piece, our big triangle, which is the A piece and the two C's. And we're going to place it right sides down on top of that zipper. We're going to move that lining piece out the way and then we're going to line it up nice and neat so there's that extra bit at the top and we're going to stitch it in place with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so now we want to add the other piece of our lining. So we're going to flip it over so that we've got the pieces like this. This is our first lining piece. Then we're going to flip it over again. And we're going to take our second lining piece and we're going to place it right side down along that edge of the zipper. Okay, and we're going to baste it in place along that edge. Once we've basted it, we're going to flip it over when we're at the machine and then we're going to stitch going over that stitch line that we used before and we're going to make sure, as we have been before, that we lift up the foot and move the zipper out the way so that we can get our stitches nice and close and make that a really nice straight line. So now we've stitched that, we're then going to make sure that the first pocket piece is over to the left. The Second pocket piece is wrong sides facing the ACC panel and then we're going to top stitch along there just to keep that all nice and neat. Okay, so the zipper is all top stitched and in place. Then we want to just make sure that all our pieces line up with that top panel. So I'm going to trim off that excess because we're not going to need that. And I'm just going to check from the other side and I'm going to trim that off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and baste that edge on the machine just to keep it all nice together. So now I'm gonna show you how to do the small pocket option. So for me, this is gonna be my back, but obviously you can choose how you're going to do it. So you want to take your left panel as you prepared earlier with your zip attached. Then you want to take the left lining piece and it's the piece that mirrors the panel, the left panel. So you want to paste, place them right sides together and we're going to baste along that edge. So I've flipped over after I've basted and I'm just sewing along the stitch line that we had before. Now, I have to say that basting is shocking. My machine obviously wasn't threaded properly and that is really bad stitching, but I don't care because it's basting, you're never gonna see it. Then we need to stitch one eighth of an inch from the edge to top stitch that down. Then we want to take our main panel and we want to attach it to the raw edge of the zip on the right. So we want to place it right sides together and we want to make sure that it is correctly lined up so that it is going to match up that point and that point at the bottom when it's sewn together. And I'm going to sew it from the zip side so that I can catch in that little extra tab of the zip as well, just like I did on the larger option. Next, we're going to flip the whole piece over and we need to attach our other side of the pocket. So we're going to place it right sides together. And again, we want to make sure that it's nicely lined up. Place those two together and then we're going to stitch that against that side of the zip which has got the ACC panel and we're going to stitch along that edge and we're going to go over the stitches that we did before three eighths of an inch from the edge so now we've got those two lining pieces in place we're going to stitch one eighth of an inch from that edge to complete the zipper piece so I've top stitched down that side, making sure that the panel pieces were both going to the left, as I did so. And of course, moving the zipper out of the way so you get a nice straight seam. And then we're gonna flip it over. And here, as you can see, they don't quite match up. So I'm just gonna trim that off and then I'm gonna stitch 3 eighths of an inch from that edge to close that pocket. So coming back to the main panels of the bag, we're now going to place the R piece right sides together and we're just going to make sure that the top and bottom corners are lined up. And we're going to sew that with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. We're then going to open up the seams on the back and we're going to top stitch 
each side of that seam with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. And we're of course going to do that on the other panel as well. So now that those two panels are stitched, we then need to make sure that it's all lining up. So check the pattern, it's got the measurement that this needs to be, and then we're just gonna chop off any excess so that it's nice and straight and it's gonna match up when we come to the next step. So I've trimmed off the top and the bottom of the two panels and I've made sure that they're nicely squared up and that they're also the same size. So now we just wanna make sure that all our edges are the same and lined up. So you want to make a mark in the center and you want to fold it right sides together and just make sure that that line is the same. Now, mine's a little bit different, so I'm just gonna make sure that it's all nicely lined up. I'm gonna do that on both panels. Just make sure that they're both exactly the same. This would also be the point as well if you're going to do a plain back panel that you would use this as a pattern piece and make sure it's all exactly the same angles. Now we're going to attach the bottom piece D to our main panel. Now if you're going to put a logo on the front of your bag then now is the time you're going to want to do that and you're just going to want to put a little bit of interfacing or something to make sure that the little prongs that they usually come with are not showing or are not going to hurt the lining. So what we want to do is we want to center this strip and we're going to clip and then we're going to stitch three quarters of an inch in from that edge. So now that's clipped we just want to stitch three eighths of an inch along that seam. You want to make sure that you're stitching from the back side so that you can definitely catch in that pocket. And we're going to go do that of course on both panels. Then we're going to fold back that seam and we're going to top stitch along the edge just like we did on the other seams. Now that we've top stitched along the bottom of those panels, the front and back panels, we now need to cut off the excess of that D section that we've just stitched on. So I'm gonna get my ruler and I'm gonna cut along that line. Now we're gonna move on to our lining. So I've got my G piece right side up and then I've got my E, the top band, right side down. And I'm gonna line it up against that top edge clip and then I'm going to stitch it three eighths of an inch from the edge and I'm also going to do that to my other G piece and my other E piece. Then I'm going to push back the seams towards the G piece and top stitch on the lining side. So now we've top stitched that on the lining side we're then going to match it up with our exterior panel. We want to make sure that they are exactly the same size. So I've marked the middle, top and bottom of both of the panels and I'm going to make sure that these are going to line up. I'm going to place them right sides together and I'm going to match up those middle points. So I'm going to match up those points and I'm going to trim off any excess at the sides so that they match exactly. If anything we want the lining to be a smidge on the smaller size because we don't want it to be baggy, we want it to fit snugly inside the bag. Moving on to the slip pocket, you want to take your two F pieces and place them right sides together. And then we're going to stitch three eighths of an inch along the two long edges and turn it the right way out. Then we need to top stitch along the top of the slip pocket. So next we're going to attach our slip pocket to our lining. Now you need to choose which part of the bag you want to have the slip pocket and which part you want to have the zip. So I'm going to have the slip pocket on the front edge of the bag and then I'm going to have my zipper pocket on the back edge of the bag. You want to make sure you've got the right piece. So this is my front piece and I've matched up that lining piece of course to match that front piece. So this is where I'm going to put my slip pocket. So we want to match up the sides of the slip pocket with the edges of our lining. Now, of course, as you can see, it is a lot longer. It is meant to be like that. That is so that when we put it in place, it's going to bow and give us lots of room inside for the next bit. So we want to clip or pin that in place. And it says in the pattern, the distance up from the bottom. So you just want to make sure that you're putting it in the right place. And same on the other side. 
Then we're going to baste along these two edges to keep that nice and secure. So now those edges are, ba are basted. We need to measure three inches, mark a line, and then we need to measure another five inches and mark a line. Then on the machine, we're going to stitch down this line. Then we're going to lift up, start again, stitch down this line. But then we're going to keep the needle down and we're going to go all the way back to this edge. And that is going to make a larger pocket here, a smaller pocket here, and it's going to leave a lovely big loop. And that little genius piece there is to hold a water bottle so that it doesn't fall over in your bag. That's so clever. OK, so we've sewn up our slip pocket. So we've got our lovely bigger pouch there. I've got a smaller one there. And then we've got our water bottle holder here. Moving on to our zipper pocket, we're going to take the piece that we cut out at the beginning. We're going to fold it both sides in towards each other, right sides together. And we're just going to pop a pin in the middle. And again, the other way. Using a friction pen, make a mark where you've placed those pins and take out the pins. Then you want to make a mark along the middle so there's a horizontal line going straight across the middle of your piece. And also make a mark where the vertical middle joins it. From the centre, you want to measure three inches in both directions and make small marks on the line. Then you need to measure down from the three inch marks and draw a horizontal line between the two points. This is the top line of your zipper box and it should measure as the pattern says. Then you're going to make another line three eighths of an inch down from this line that you've just drawn. This top and bottom line is then going to make your zipper box. I drew in the short sides of my zipper box, but we're actually not going to be stitching those. I just like to have them there as well. Then you need to make a horizontal line in the middle of that zipper box and it needs to be half an inch from each of the shorter ends. And then you're going to draw a line from the corners to the middle line. This is going to be your zipper box that you're going to be stitching for your inside zipper. Then we're going to take our other lining piece. We don't need that front panel for now. And I've made a mark in the middle so that I can line up my zipper pocket. So using that folded centre line that we just marked earlier, we're going to line that up with the top edge of the lining piece. And we're just going to make sure that it's all nice and lined up with that central piece, with that central pin. And we're going to pin that in place. Then we're going to stitch along this top line and the bottom line. We're not going to stitch these end to short lines. We're just stitching the top and bottom and we're going to use a really tight stitch. I'm going to use a length two and we're going to make sure that we're going backwards at the beginning and the end of each line just to make it really secure. Then we're going to cut along those diagonal lines that we drew and that centre line. You want to make sure that you get as close as you can to the stitches, but do not go through the stitches and you still want to leave about a millimetre just before the stitches. Then we're going to turn it all the way through and we're going to press that all open so it's really nice and flat. Next we're going to attach our zipper into that hole we've just made. Now you can use some double sided tape or just some regular glue and we're just going to kind of baste it in place using this glue so that it keeps it in nice and in place when we're stitching. So we're going to place that inside. You want to make sure that you've got an inch each side. And of course, your zipper pull is in the middle of the box. Then we're going to flip it over. And then from the top, we're going to stitch that so it's nice and neat. We're going to use a zipper foot and we're going to be stitching one eighth of an inch from the edge. Don't forget to lift up the foot and move the zipper pull out the way so that we get a nice straight line. You also want to make sure when you're stitching that you keep the pieces that you've just sewn out the way. I'm also going to pop some pins in there just to really help keep it nice and secure. So with the zipper in place, I'm just going to snip that end and I'm going to also burn it just to make sure it's really nice and not going to fray. Then we want to place the pocket together 
and I'm going to pin those two short edges or the side edges together and then we need to stitch those with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and we're going to make sure that we go backwards and forwards at each end to really make it secure. We are not stitching that bottom line at this stage. So I've just turned off that bottom edge by a quarter of an inch and pressed it because that's going to make it a lot easier when we come to birth the bag and we're going to stitch that closed at the end. Next we need to find the centre of the top of our lining. So to do that, I'm just simply going to fold it in half, finger press it, so I've got that crease. And then I'm gonna make a mark. Actually, I'm gonna use a friction pen. Do that the same on the other one as well. Then I want to make a mark down from there by one and a half inches. I want to place the protector of the back of my magnetic snap with the, that mark I just made in the middle of the circle. Then I'm going to make marks for the prongs either side. And I'm gonna do the same on this one. So we want to make sure that those snaps line up. Next we need to cut four little scraps of the Decaville light or the same interfacing that you used. You could also use fusible fleece as well. And we're just going to take one for now. Then we want to mark up on the back in the same way that we just did. And we're going to cut those little slits. Then we're going to cut the slits that we made in our lining panel. Then we're going to pop the magnetic snap in through those slips, in through the extra Decaville light. Then we're going to pop the protector on the back and open the prongs. Then we're going to take the extra bit of Decaville and we're just going to fuse that to the back. That's going to protect the prongs from the lining. Then we want to make sure that our other lining matches up. So we're just going to double check that those slits are in the right place. And that looks like that's gonna be right. So we want to place right sides together with the clasp together, the magnetic clasp together. And you want to make sure everything is nice and lined up. And we're going to clip the edges together you want to make sure that those top panels are lined up really nicely. You're going to need to sort of squish down that slip pocket as well. Clip all the way around. Also at this stage we want to mark out where we're going to box the bottom of the bag. So you want to take that zipper tab pattern and we're just going to mark in that square. Oh, before I clip up that bottom piece I just need to make sure I don't think it is so I need to make sure that that zipper that inside zipper is open then you're going to choose how to birth your bag I'm going to birth my bag through the opening in the lining that I'm going to leave so I'm going to clip it together like I say and then I'm going to leave about an eight inch opening at the bottom for birthing my bag I want to make sure that some of this bottom piece is stitched and I need to back stitch to make sure it's really nice and secure. I'm going to back stitch on those edges. Now when I make this stitch down this outside edge it's going to be three eighths of an inch but it's going to widen out to five eighths of an inch. That's going to make your lining really snug in your bag. I'm going to stop at this line, I'm going to back stitch, I'm going to start again here and like I say, I'm going to leave about eight inches in the middle open, back stitch, and then I'm going to go again from this side, five eighths of an inch up to three eighths of an inch, all the way up to the top. So now that those side seams are stitched, we're then going to cut along that box that we drew earlier. Then we're going to open up that box that we've just cut out and we're going to pinch it together and you want to nest your seams 
So you want to put them so one's going one way and the other is going the other way. Pin or clip it in place and then we're going to sew with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Then I'm just going to cut off that excess seam allowance with some pinking shears. So now we're on to sewing up the outside of the bag. But for now, we're just going to make sure that we've got these bottom edges really nice and matching. I'm going to put a clip in there and then we're going to stitch along this bottom edge, three eighths of an inch from the edge. We're going to do one line of stitching at our 2.5 length and then we're going to do a line of stitching just past it at a two length and that's going to make it really nice and secure. After stitching that seam you then need to push the seam allowance towards the back of the bag and then top stitch it each side of that seam line just like we have on the rest of the bag. Next we need to take our zipper tabs just like we did before we're going to mark that square around the corners on both sides. Then we're going to just place a clip making sure those two side seams match up with those panels. And we're going to cut that box out that we've just drawn. Then we're going to take those clips away and open it out again. Now is the time that we're going to reinforce the base of our bag. Now I didn't have any Decaville Heavy so I'm just using Decaville Light and I'm going to use two of them and I'm going to centre it and fuse them in place. We want to make sure that the, the point of the compass is lining up, that pyramid, that triangle is lining up at the top. Match up that panel there as well and then we're going to sew those side seams with 3 8 of an inch on both sides stopping at that box. So I've stitched that those side seams, don't forget to stitch an extra line of stitching next to it just like we did on the other seams and then we need to just finger press open those seams if you're using vinyl or if you've used quilting cotton you can of course press it open. We also want to just cut off that seam allowance of the vinyl and we can either clip the corners or we can use pinking shears to help it to lie really nice and go around that corner. Then you want to turn the bag the right way out and we're going to attach our strap connectors. So there's two options for the bag. You can either attach it in the seam and the lining or you can attach them on the side. I'm going to show you how to attach them on the side. So you want to place your connector that we made earlier with the top of the D-ring aligning with the top of the bag. And then we're going to stitch it to the bag with a box. And if you're not going to use a rivet, I would recommend you do a barn door fastening as well the two diagonal lines in the middle but if i'm going to add a rivet so i'm just going to do the square and then we're going to box the bottom of the bag so we want to make sure that our seams are pressed open And we're going to sew three eighths of an inch along both of those edges. So with your exterior the right side out and your lining exactly as it's going to be, you want to place the bag, the exterior, inside your lining. Like so. You want to triple check that your zip is open. And we're going to line up everything. So we're going to line up our side seams. And of course our other side seam. 
Um, we're just going to go around, line it all up, make sure it's all nice, make sure those connectors are well out of the way. We do not want to be going through those with a needle. <laughs> And we also want to make sure we're catching that smaller pocket lining if you've done the smaller pocket as well. Super important that we get that all lined up and caught when we do this stitch. So I'm going to stitch all the way around three eighths of an inch and I'm going to do a second line of stitching just inside that as well to reinforce it. So I've stitched around that top edge twice just like before on the other seam so it's really strong. If you have got any interfacing in the seam allowance now's the time you want to trim that out. So now we're going to birth the bag. So I've left a big hole in my lining but if you haven't and it's in your zipper pocket you want to reach through and you want to birth your bag through that hole but I've made life a little bit easier for myself and I'm going to birth it through this larger hole here. Okay, so now we're going to stitch that bottom of the lining closed. We're gonna reach through the zipper pocket and we're gonna pull the lining out of that hole in the zipper. And we just need to do a line of stitching to close that bottom bit of lining. So now that's stitched, I'm going to pop that back through the zip to close the lining. And then I'm going to pull out the zipper pocket lining. And you can either blind stitch this closed by hand or I'm just going to do it on the machine. So the final thing to do is to top stitch around that topper edge. You want to try and pre finger press it down. So there is a lot, quite a lot of bulk in some of these edges. So just go slowly, take it easy, put in a new needle and make sure for sure you've got enough bobbin thread and that will finish that top edge really nicely. So what bag should I make next? Pop a comment below and let me know the style of bag that you are looking for a tutorial on. I really hope that you love this tutorial, but we're not done yet. Coming up on the screen right now are some more great tutorials that I think you're going to love. I'll see you on the next video.